what's going on everyone welcome to texas on channel if you're new here definitely consider subscribing doing great been driving it around with no issues whatsoever we're gonna be taking it on a road trip to kansas um we're gonna zip tie this actuator all the way open that way it doesn't make a lot of boost it'll make like half a pound to one psi at most We could put an FMU on it, which is basically a fuel management unit. It'll bump the fuel pressure up for every one PSI it senses, which does help, but it's not going to be enough. So we're going to actually be installing the Apexi tuner in another video. It'll already be installed in this video, um, but I'm not going to do the install on this video. So there'll be a whole separate video for that. Um, but basically right now, the way it's set up, it's doing great. It drives great. Um, you can take this supercharger belt off, put the stock one on, and it does run and drive perfectly fine still. So that is an option if you're worried that you'll blow it up. So we are going to uh, basically load the family up here right before it gets dark. We like to travel at night due to the less traffic and the kids can sleep on the way there. And it is an eight and a half to nine hour drive there and back. So it's eight and a half one way, eight and a half the other way, depending on how many times we stop for food, fuel, and so on. But I'm going to basically uh, put a little video clips of driving here and there. And uh, yeah, we'll go over more once we get to Kansas. Um, before every road trip I take, I pour this a full bottle of this in. Uh, we don't take road trips often, but when I do, make sure to pour a full bottle of the Best Line fuel treatment. They make a newer version that's even better than this, but this stuff works pretty good. Reduces combustion chamber deposits, protects system corrosion, removes water, and reduces fuel pump wear. Really good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour the full bottle in, and then we're gonna put some 93 in it. But just figured uh, I'd let you guys know, it's really, really good stuff. There will be a link in the description where you can get your own. So. Are you excited to go on a road trip? Yes. What about you? I'm ready. What about you? I'm also ready. And of course my wife's ready because you know, it's time to get out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Fueled up. 11 gallons fit in there and now we're ready. We're gonna go over there and get some uh, Whataburger. Whataburger. So definitely gonna get some what Whataburger and uh, then hit the road. Is it good? <laughs> okay, we're here in Denton, uh, 186 miles. It's, it was doing really good on fuel, but we ran into a lot of road construction and fluctuating speeds from a couple wrecks and stuff like that. But overall, it's doing awesome. It's running really good. Uh, the check engine light comes on and then shuts off sometimes because the EGR code. In an upcoming video, I'm going to show you how to get that EGR code to go away for good. Doing a really simple trick to your EGR valve. So definitely stay tuned to the channel. Um, but other than that, it's driving awesome. 186 miles down out of 500 to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and top it off while we're here at the gas station since the kids decided they needed to go to the bathroom. But uh, yeah, doing awesome. Well, we're back on the road, so another five hours. Okay, made it to Kansas, uh, rested up, and uh, we're here at my dad's job. This is R&R. &R. This is my dad. <laughs> Ooh, got some donuts. Free advertising. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? But uh, yeah, I want to show you under the hood of his car real quick so you guys can see some uh, odd similarities. It's super and windy and cold here, but weird. That's, that almost looks like the supercharger I have. Pretty cool little car. 
Okay, did some catching up with my dad, and now I'm over here at the exhaust shop. A good friend of mine, Perry Rice, is welding up the O2 sensor bung for the wideband, so that way we can actually see what the air-fuel ratios are. So, um, here in a minute, I'm going to show you what it looks like routed. All right, as you can see, ran it up over the exhaust and drive shaft, zip tied it out of the way above the heat shield and over to where it's at. All right, everything's working perfectly. Air fuels are right in the parameters. So now I'm gonna go see my brother Austin, then AJ, and then we're gonna be heading back. Yeah, this thing's badass. I love it, I love it. <laughs> it's awesome, right? Supercharged Honda Pilot, yeah, first great, one. Great. Great. Now, now, you're going to have a white lifted Honda Pilot. <laughs> I'm going to have a white lifted Honda CRV. There you go. And that's turbo yours. Tur oh, I, I want to. I want to. That'd be cool. Can it turbo and keep the snorkel? Yeah. You, you can? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Uh, someone's selling a turbo on the more Auto uh, yeah. for like 70 bucks. Get and it. I'm like, <laughs> God, I want to. You can adapt it. Look who it is, it's AJ. What up? So he got rid of Lilith. Yep. I'll put a little video right here of his new car. It needs I'm some work done to it, but. Still got an EF though. Yeah, still an EF. Still it, an EF. The four door for the kids though, yep. you know? So it makes sense why you got, got rid of Lilith. Got the kids around somehow. Yeah. The hatch is a little small for car seats, two right, of them. Right, right. Yeah, we've just uh, been visiting family and we're about to be heading back to Texas and the pilot now that it's got the wide band all hooked up and yeah. everything else so figured I'd feature you on the channel because you know they're they're missing you they want you to come back I'll be back eventually yeah you tell them yourself you do want to come back I do want to come back it's I just, miss Texas <laughs> this cold Kansas weather how do you love it I hate it <laughs> with a passion it was sunny in 75 yesterday the day before today <laughs> we're over here freezing freezing and the pouring rain <laughs> yep and I was uh, getting stuff done to the freaking pilot, putting new plugs in, stuff like that, and the cold. And the cold. Yeah. And you're like, screw this, I'm ready to go back. <laughs> right. But now we back. are going back, and I bet you're ready to go back to Texas. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to just hop in the driver's seat and then just drive there. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> oh, and, and hopefully it's tuned for 10 pounds of boost. Well, only seven. I don't know. <laughs> it's not tuned yet, but we got everything in, in order for it now, so. But yeah. We're gonna be heading out here in just a minute, and once we hit the road, there'll be a little video clip of that, and once we get back to Texas, we'll go over more. See you then. All right, got the tank filled up. So far, we've gone 658 miles. Um, that's on trip A, trip B, 222. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, running good still. And now the check engine lights for the EGR, but we have a fix for that. I'll go over later when we get back to Texas. But heading back now, air fuels are reading in the 15s, which is really good, especially when you're not under a load. 14s, 15s is definitely good for fuel economy. So we're gonna try to keep it in that range. The Apexi Neo tells us our throttle position. Whenever I give it gas, it blips, and then we can adjust through all the settings. But I'll go over that. Uh, later on, but now we're gonna head back to uh, Texas. So here we go All right, I stopped in Winfield had to go see Michael. They gotta go to the bathroom. So I figure this is a good time To uh, show you gone 88 miles. I'm just barely off the full but uh yeah it's doing pretty good air fuel ratios look pretty decent as you can see um i'm gonna lean them out just a little bit more because we're just cruising so we'll probably be in like the high 15 low 16 range um, as long as it doesn't have drivability issues it'll be fine for fuel economy but uh yeah. okay i have a full tank now went 88.8 .8 miles and i only used 3.3 gallons 
um, which is like 26 miles to the gallon, which is better than what the pilot gets from the factory. So that's awesome news. The miles per gallon definitely went up. It was because of the best line, which usually does increase our fuel mileage. Either way, I'm super happy with it. And now we're gonna hit the road and go back to Texas. We got back safe and sound. We put 1,358 miles on here. Um, right at 999 miles, it rolls over to zero again, and we've gone 358 miles since then. So that's 1,358.4 miles that we went. Uh, we used a couple tanks of gas, uh, but it did get better fuel mileage with the supercharger on. Um, but let me show you under the hood real quick. So under the hood, we got the supercharger nice and cleaned up and painted. I've added some Best Line Racing Additive. It's an engine treatment you can use in your daily driver, your lawnmower. I'm not just uh, saying that their stuff's good because they give me some free products from time to time, um, but they don't pay me to say this stuff. Uh, I genuinely trust their products. I use it in the engine, uh, in the in the supercharger, and I'm gonna be putting some in the transmission because it does reduce heat and friction. Um, which will make it last much longer. Um, but it looks really good. I did it the color my wife uh, loves, so it's actually one of her favorite colors. Matches the Honda emblem, and it sounds really good. Sounds real smooth and real nice. And it builds boost up pretty quick. Sounds really good and it's super healthy. Let's check the air fuel ratios out real quick. Well, there's the air fuel ratio at idle 15 to 15 6. Um, 14 to 15 is really good. It'll barely be sipping any fuel just sitting here idling. And on the Apexi Neo, which I will have a full detailed install video and all that, um, this right here basically have everything on the air maps on the high high throttle side we have it 50 percent and it's maxed out the injectors and i have it negative down here for best fuel economy um, but this is the low throttle side but the thing is we're still maxed out on these injectors and it's not being able to keep up so um, i'll put a little video clip right here of getting on it As you can see those air fuel ratios need to be in like the lower 12 high 11s uh, for boost and that was only one psi so when it has all five it's even worse so here's a video clip of five psi it's too lean for me to stay in it and i don't like to stay on it very long when it's that lean um, the only issue i've had with this supercharger being installed at all is the EGR valve light check engine light comes on from time to time um, so I have a fix that should fix that problem but I'm gonna test that out in another video um, but yeah I cleared the code and it stayed off for quite a while and then it comes back on so um, runs really good and the fuel economy was great with the supercharger on that 1300 mile trip so yeah hopefully in the next video I'll be doing the uh, install video on the Apexi Neo and showing you a pinout diagram because there isn't any for the Honda Pilot anywhere on the internet right now. I basically had to make my own pinout. Um, so I have to go ahead and get all that figured out and share it with you guys because it'll help you a lot. I had to do a lot of research to get this all figured out because there's nothing out there. I still have this zip tied all the way wide open. That way it's um, lowest boost possible which is 0.5 to 1 psi so it's like half pound to a full pound 
Also ran a different map sensor because I still have the one down here just plugging the hole. And I put the map sensor up top so it gets vacuum up here instead of the boost down here. Uh, if you've ever heard of a missing link, this is, this is imitating a missing link. It'll hide the boost pressure that's down here on this side. Anything below the supercharger is going to, you're going to sense that boost pressure. Up here, it just sees vacuum. And that did help uh, richen it up a little bit on the air fuel ratio, but it's not able to sense how much boost pressure is going in. So you got your pros and your cons with that setup, but this way it's actually running richer, so it's actually pretty good. Um, we could do an FMU to bump the fuel pressure up a little bit and get a little more out of these injectors, but it's not going to be enough. Come to find out the J35A4 has 240cc injectors, which is the same as a stock Civic um, D15, D16 engine. So that's very tiny. We're going to have to go with some Acura RDX injectors. They're supposedly plug in place. We just plug them right in. And they're 410 cc's so we'll go into the apexi neo and subtract fuel if you're wondering why there's no other ecu for this they haven't made any programs or anything for the honda pilot um, i'm sure we could adapt an aem or a haltech ecu in here that's a lot of wiring and it's still automatic so we have that issue to worry about as well so the apexi neo is working fantastic for what we have um, so we'll just have to subtract fuel once we get the bigger injectors in and we should be golden um, as for the automatic transmission we're going to be putting a transmission cooler on um, just because it's a safe thing to do, especially when you're adding more heat. We live in Texas, and I do some towing sometimes with this thing. So it's probably a good idea, and this is coming up on 200,000 miles, and the transmissions are the weak point. Also, do not flush them. You can drain the fluid on these things, no problem. But if you flush them, they're a low-flow transmission, so you end up blowing out seals and stuff on the inside, and then they have issues. So never flush these. Just drain the fluid out and put fresh, genuine Honda fluid in it, and you're good to go. But I'll be doing an install on the transmission cooler and going through all the details as much as I can for you guys. Because I know you guys have wanted to know about a lot of details, so I'm trying to make them as detailed as I can. So sorry these videos are so long, but I just wanted to get you as much in there as I could. But before I get off here, I wanted to give a huge shout out and thanks to Matt Starnes for the Stage 4 unsprung clutch. I hate unsprung clutches. Um, dailying them at least, and this is slightly a daily. So... I will still use it though because you got it and you sent it to me and I had no idea you were doing that. Thanks a lot, man. I've had good luck with the XTD and XTR brand, um, especially with the stage three, but this is a stage four, so it's even stronger pressure plate. Um, so thanks for that and a huge thanks to Lucky. Um, he sent me this JDM cluster, it goes to 180K, 76,000 miles on it. And he sent me a little note. I'll put it right here on screen. You can pause it and read it if you're interested into what it says. Let me get a good little spot here. So a huge thanks to him for uh, sending all that stuff. I read the note, um, and I just I can't wait to and I can't wait to just put this thing in and get that clutch in. That'll be coming soon enough. I got these gauge pod holders since I stole them out of the stole the uh, gauge from Yoshi. So that'll be sitting up there with the boost gauge and the wide band. I have to get another wide band, but this thing's still running great. Even though the wide band's not in it, we can't really do any pulls or anything, but. So still running good. And we definitely have more stuff coming to the channel, so definitely stay tuned. I'm gonna also do a build breakdown how much we got into this setup right here so you guys will know because I try to do everything on a budget and it's taken me a while to save up to get all this stuff. I know it seems like I'm going bow, 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 but I had all this kind of planned out. So I hope you guys appreciate the videos and uh, share them around. Hit the like button, drop a comment below and stay tuned because we definitely have more coming to the channel. So, so hope to see you guys in the next one. As I like to say, God bless, stay safe, stay awesome.